Hi guys, it's Ben from Second Dynasty here. Yesterday when we were trying to live stream, we had some serious technical issues and we think it's related to the wireless internet we have at the moment as a temporary solution after we have moved offices from Torlathon to Vanishboy in Sweden. Um, although we're quite well established otherwise, we have been working. Uh, we made some recent releases and plan to do some more. Uh, but I thought I would just make a video update about the Free Trader Beowulf at 28mm scale that we are currently designing for a future Kickstarter. Um, this is our second full scale 28mm ship uh, from that is officially licensed uh, from Far Future Enterprises with the Traveller license. Um, as you can see, the original art for the Beowulf has quite a thin uh, body with the uh, the ship. The classic design's been around since the 70s um, and the most recent iteration which we have here is the deck plans from Traveller 5 or T5. Um, however these do not translate very well into the third dimension so we have had to make a few modifications. Um, so the main thing we've done is to preserve the aesthetics of the ship. We've lengthened the ship by about uh, two and a half squares so that the total length of the ship should be around about 28 inches or around about 70 centimeters. Um, the deck plan changes that we've made, uh, I can show you here in Photoshop. Um, Mark Miller asked me to uh, do some, um, basically a sketch of the changes to the plans. Uh, so you can see that the ship has been lengthened uh, somewhat. Here was the original length. Uh, it's, it has increased in height slightly just to increase uh, some of the headspace in some of these more cramped sections. And uh, then, of course, um, the other major changes in the clinic. If we, if we look at the original plans here, uh, we're supposed to have 20 uh, low berths here. Low berths are like crow chambers. If you're not familiar with Traveller, you can think of the, the film Alien. Uh, cold sleep, cryo sleep, whatever you want to call it. Um, the uh, cryogenic chambers here would be extremely cramped. We also have a staircase here that is intersecting with these down here because there is a bit of a curvature with the hull. In fact, why don't we get into Maya and we can look at what we have so far. So I have done the basic outline of the ship. We've lengthened it slightly. Uh, so it still looks quite in keeping with the traditional traveler design. The bottom of the ship is a lot more flattened to account for the deck space. And then we have mocked up the general layout here. So I'm just going to turn off some of these mock-up layers so we can look at the what the final product will be or, or something close to it. So I've made the top of these walls all black so that if we did go into the top-down view, let's see, it would appear as if it is a proper... Um, sort of deck plan or at least we can tell where the walls and doors are. Uh, so you can see the major changes here are in the medical bay and uh, that the addition of this additional two inches to the front of the ship. Um, if we drop back into a three-dimensional view of things, um, I could just temporarily turn on the lights. This will probably lag slightly in Maya. Uh, the forward section we have our sensors, that's not greatly altered from the original plans. Um, it's slightly deeper, but only by about half a, a square. Each square, by the way, is 1 inch or 1.5 meters at scale. Uh, Traveller tends to use metric, but uh, it still is an American game. So, um, Let's see. So yeah, we also, on the in the original plans, if we look at it, we see this landing pad at the front of the ship. So the original configuration of the ship has two rear landing pads and one forward uh, landing pad. And it has a central ramp behind that ramp, uh, be behind the pad, which creates a bit of an issue because if we look at the 3D model, uh, now this ramp is longer, but if you imagine for a minute that the, the landing it was central here you would see that you immediately run into a problem of the ramp opens up onto a landing gear. So it does make it harder to put cargo into the ship through that. Um, so what we have done is we've looked at some of the other design solutions for the Beowulf and we have added two landing gears mm -hmm. to the front of the ship rather than uh, 
the central one. Uh, this of course creates some issues because we did have two crew quarters here uh, that we need to solve. And uh, we also um, needed to, to fix these uh, cryo births, I guess. Um, I did come up with a configuration that could possibly work to fit four into a one inch square. But even with that, the curvature of the ship would make it uh, basically impossible to do. Uh, we've also moved the stairs over to this side. That has more to do with deck two, where uh, in the original plans, uh, let me turn off the lighting again so it's a little clearer. Um, this is very much just a block out. Uh, in the original plans, you can see here uh, on, uh, sorry, on deck B, that we have crew quarters coming off the crew commons straight here. Then we have this round corridor that heads to the stairs. Now again, there was issues with clearance under the stairs. It's not really room for anything. Um, but those crew quarters too, because we can have uh, berths, let, let's uh, put the hole back on. You can see that the, the top half of the ship has quite an extreme curve there. Now, if we had a staircase there, I mean, it would still work. But it makes a bit more sense to just shift the, this room one square over and move the stairs to this side to uh, increase the clearance in the med bay and to also, um, well, because you, you have quite a large crew uh, room here anyway. Uh, and in fact, it'll be slightly larger than the original and mirror the high suite on the other side. So that that's the main change uh, aside from also these uh, if we look at the original plans again uh, we have a vault on this side and a ship's locker on this side and if this is at the same height as uh, the bridge this is an extremely claustrophobic uh, space so what I have done is uh, drop the floor level down just slightly so it will be accessed via um, some kind of door, this is just a stand-in at the moment, um, and you would just be able to crawl in and there's just a bit more storage room. Again, if we turn the hole back on, you can sort of see that the cavity now is at least usable, whereas it would have just been a crawl space if you had the floor at this sort of height. So uh, that's the main change. We've gone through and, uh, we let me just turn off this level again. Uh, so we've kept one crew room in the centre uh, that would fit to a uh, crew. Obviously, in the physical model, you could switch out the interior here so that you could have like bunk beds or just a single cabin or add a fresher. The freshers themselves actually fit fairly well. I didn't think they would. Um, we're about to work on the airlock. Uh, there is a slight change there where I've moved the door over half an inch. Um, you can see, uh, wait, that's deck C. Um, so it makes more sense to center the doors because these are meant to be iris doors. So if it was on this side, we'd have issues where the door cannot properly retract. Okay, so it's mostly practical stuff like that where here uh, is meant to be an iris door as well. We'll probably switch it out for a sliding door or something because there's just nowhere on this side to put the iris. Um, you know, the iris works like a camera lens, um, and in that way it needs somewhere to retract. So the circle that's behind there is hidden in the walls, right? So um, that is the bulk of the changes. Now let's look at some of the details. Um, we have just made single cryopods instead of uh, having trying to cram four into each square. So essentially now you can fit two in each square, but we do need some room for the physical walls. So we have seven in the actual med bay. And then here, rather than having two cabins um, here, because we lengthened the ship, I've added a corridor. And uh, to that corridor, uh, we've got another five here. And then we come up to a landing. I haven't finished the floors here yet, but um, then we have the remaining uh, eight pods. So in total we still have the 20, uh, but this is far more accessible both for low berth passengers and uh, for crew. We have then a second crew quarters there up the front, uh, and then of course the access to the front of the ship there. So this will have removable uh, access panels, 
I uh, need to thank uh, Shadow Liger for that. And then uh, we also have the forward landing gear. This time I've refined the concept from the type S. We've, we've taken the lessons learned and integrated it so that both the uh, left and right side of where the landing gear will attach uh, has like built-in support, so it should be structurally more sound. And then we've also added, in addition to, the, the, this ship will be quite long and heavy, like I said, it's uh, about 70 centimeters or 28 inches long. So we have room for these uh, model aircraft uh, support rods. You can buy aluminum rods and cut them to spec. We've actually added a crossbar here. So that should hopefully mean that when you do have both landing gears in and you've got the whole weight of the ship behind it, um, whereas the Type S sort of like bends inwards so that the landing gear kind of stick out a bit, uh, this should hopefully be quite stable and uh, not see any warping. Then the final section I've been working on is just the geometry for the top of the ramp. So we're very much close to being finished with the forward section of the ship. Today, this afternoon, I'm going to work on the airlock and foyer, uh, as well as uh, getting the floor pieces finished in here and the cabins. So uh, that's the update for now with the major changes. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, understand and uh, appreciate the changes that have been made. A lot of the time when you're translating something that's been designed in a, a 2D space into a 3D space, uh, you will run into issues that uh, people didn't think about with the original design. And in fact, you can kind of see that with the side view here. Like if these squares are 1.5 meters, technically, yes, you could fit some stuff into here. Um, but it would be extremely cramped. Um, and, you know, you would have to basically bend down to, to be able to move to all the different parts of the ship. Um, so we have increase the height probably overall um, it's mostly just a case of this sort of angle at the at the base of the ship is a little bit if we look at it it's a little bit more uh, subtle uh, so so it starts angling up about here and then uh, we also had issues of um, you can kind of see here if I turn on the deck a above it's meant to be a floor here and before um, we, we kind of moved this forward so that there's at least some headroom because it was quite low before. Anyway, um, I've babbled on long enough. Uh, this is an update on the Free Trader Beowulf design. Uh, we're making great progress, I feel, and uh, we will talk to you in the next update. Thanks, guys.